Our next presenter uh, is Dr. Shahab Mohageg. He's with Intelligent Solutions and a professor with uh, West Virginia University. I am uh, aptly warned that I was about to say he's with professor with Virginia Tech, and I was told I'll get killed if I said that <laughs> in Virginia. So, uh, doc Dr. Mohageg is going to present uh, new uh, new technologies and new methods for reservoir simulation and modeling based on pattern recognition. And I think his paper also uh, does justice to covering other forms of traditional reservoir simulation. So it's a good comparison paper plus a flavor of new technologies. Shahab. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as the title says, uh, it is a new way of doing reservoir simulation and modeling. Uh, compared to what our industry has been used to in the past uh, uh, several decades. It's based on uh, pattern recognition. And I start with an objective and then uh, define, identify the characteristics and then advantages of this technology. A little bit of a philosophic, couple of a slide of philo philosophy essentially, why, why it's different, why is it that we're doing uh, what we're doing. And then I'll give two examples of that. One uh, is called surrogate reservoir models, SRM, and the other one is top-down models, or TDMs. So my objective is to introduce a new class of reservoir simulation models that is based on pattern recognition technology uh, that collectively is known as artificial intelligence and data mining. These models are called AI-based reservoir model. That's the objective definition. So let me give you a definition. AI-based reservoir models introduce a complete paradigm shift, if you will, in how we model and manage our reservoirs. Uh, these models are completely new reservoir simulation models that are developed not based on first principle physics and mathematics as we do traditional models, but based on a spatial temporal database that we put together uh, to represent fluid flow in our reservoir simulation, in our reservoir. In other words, it's reservoir model for the age of data intensive science, as late Jim Gray has put it. The fourth paradigm that we're living in, we no longer do, uh, well, we do, but the first paradigm was uh, when we did empirical science. Then past 100 years, we start doing uh, theoretical science. In the past several decades, we started doing computational science. Now, uh, there's a school of thought that we are in a completely new era of uh, uh, science, which is data-intensive science, or e-science, where everything is based on data. So what are the characteristics of AI-based model? They can be developed for brown fields. They can be developed for green fields. They, are, they can be developed based on actual field data, or they can be built based on data that comes from a reservoir simulator. You can use them mainly in reservoir management, but you can use them in field development uh, strategies, uh, AI-assisted history matching, quantification of uncertainties that are associated with your uh, geological model, doing fast-track reservoir simulation, and all aspects of uh, reservoir management. So what are the advantages of AI-based model? Well, first and foremost, they are uh, free of the human bias. We learn to, to listen to the reservoir. Uh, they run in seconds once you train them, once you uh, history match them, and you're ready to use them. You don't have to use super, uh, supercomputers or clusters of hundreds of uh, CPUs in, and then wait tens of hours for a single run. They actually can run on your smartphone in real time. Comparatively speaking, you don't need a PhD to develop them. They are easy to develop. They are very easy to understand. So what is the philosophy behind it? How we go by doing this? Well, if you indulge me, I'd like to simplify the problem just for the sake of this uh, um, presentation, that in reservoir simulation and modeling, or in reservoir modeling in general, reservoir management, what we do is we try to get production as a function of, a function, 
as a function of, is being the key phrase here, as a function of several set of parameters. Uh, X, that's reservoir uh, and uh, fluid characteristics. Uh, Ys, which are the well completion and design and details. And Ws are the operational details and surface facilities and all that stuff. Uh, we know a lot about the well and about the operational constraint. Very little uncertainty associated with that. It's under our control. And therefore, when we are doing our modeling and history matching, we try to change the X's, the reservoir characteristics and fluid uh, interaction, in order to achieve uh, the cues that we see from the reservoir, right? Uh, we call that process history matching. What we assume is that f of x, or the, 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 the functions, are uh, not to be touched. In other words, uh, I, I don't know any person that when they want to history match, they go to Eclipse source code and change the, the, the equations, or, or the CMG, or, or powers, or any reservoir simulator that you use. You don't change the f of x. You just change the characteristics that geologist gives you, right? Because they're always wrong. <laughs> well, Philosophically speaking, from that point of view, we're saying that in numerical reservoir simulation, reservoir characteristics are uncertain while functional relationships are certain. That is the only assumptions we're not making in AI-based model. We're saying both of them are uncertain. In other words, our understanding, today's understanding of fluid flow in porous media is not necessarily 100% accurate and absolute certain. It was different 30 years ago. We were doing this. It's going to be different 30 years from now, and we will still be doing this. Therefore, that is uncertain as well. That's the only difference between these two from a philosophical point of view. So uh, AI-based reservoir models can be classified based on many different criteria. If you classify them based on model output, you can build AI-based model that give you well-based result, uh, production as a function of time, grid-based result, they can provide you with change of pressure and saturation throughout your reservoir, they can give you or a fully co coupled situation. Uh, they can be developed based on uh, the type of field. You can develop an uh, AI-based model for brown fields. You can develop them based for green fields. Of course, you do different actions if you're going to do that. Uh, based on functionality, you can build AI-based model that specifically geared to history matching, one that's specifically geared to reservoir analysis, one for uh, a deployment for reservoir management. But most important of all, you can build them the criteria that's most important is where does your data coming from? You have two options. Either your data is coming from the field directly measured data, or it comes from your simulator. These two give two diff completely different flavor to this AI-based model. If it comes from the field, that means very little next to no human interpretation and bias, then your model is called a top-down model, TDM. If the data comes from numerical simulator, then it is called an SRM, or a surrogate reservoir model. So now I'm going to give you exam real example of both. Uh, 